Hello, welcome to Forest Learn. In this video, you can try a one mark question to do with the energy of a mass spring system undergoing simple harmonic motion. Once you've had a go at the question, we'll discuss the solution so you can check your answer. Throughout this video, we'll be using a few abbreviations. Simple harmonic motion is commonly just referred to as SHM. Likewise, kinetic energy will just refer to that as KE and elastic potential energy we'll just call that EPE. Let's take a look at the question. A mass M attached to a horizontal spring of spring constant K is performing SHM with amplitude A. At what values of displacement is the EPE of the mass spring system three times as great as the KE of the system? Express your answer in terms of A and neglect damping. So recall KE means kinetic energy and EPE means elastic potential energy. Please pause the video and have a go at this by yourself. Once you're done, unpause it and we'll discuss the solution. Okay, welcome back. Before we discuss the solution, let me just point out that as you follow the solution, it's a good idea to write down what's being discussed in the video. This is a far more active process than just simply listening, which can often be quite a passive process and will therefore help you retain and understand the information longer and better. This is especially important if you found this question tricky. Alright, to start, it's a good idea to draw a quick label sketch to help you visualize the problem. So of course we're dealing with a horizontal mass spring system of mass M, shown here by this white circle here, and that's attached to a spring of spring constant K. And X equals zero refers to the equilibrium position and capital A represents the amplitude of the oscillations. Now, the question tells us to neglect damping, which means that the only stores of energy we need to consider in this problem are the elastic potential energy and kinetic energy. Now, as the mass oscillates back and forth about the equilibrium position, there will be a continuous transfer of energy between these two stores of energy that I just mentioned. But the sum of these energy stores will remain constant throughout. So the key idea we'll be using to attack this problem is that of conservation of energy. Namely that if you add the kinetic energy and elastic potential energy, you get the total energy of the system, the mass spring system, which remains constant throughout the oscillations. And as an abbreviation for total energy, I'll just be writing TE in what follows. When the mass is at maximum displacement, we know that the elastic potential energy will be a maximum and that the kinetic energy will be zero since the mass will have come to instantaneous rest. We can show this on a graph of energy versus displacement where we've shown the two different energy stores in different colors. So black for kinetic energy and purple for elastic potential energy. On the other hand, at zero displacement, so when the mass is at its equilibrium position, the kinetic energy will be a maximum and the elastic potential energy store now will be zero, as shown by this purple point here and this black point here. Hopefully you'll recall that the graphs when drawn for all displacements look something like the following. And the total energy, which is just the sum of these two energy stores, can be represented by a horizontal line shown by this dashed white horizontal line here. Remember, the fact that the total energy can be represented by this horizontal line here simply reflects the fact that the total energy is constant. Now, we're trying to figure out the displacements at which the EPE of the system is three times as big as the kinetic energy of the system. Now looking at the graphs, we can see that there will be two displacements, roughly here and here, that fit the bill. To work out the values of these displacements, we of course need to examine the formulae for energy in SHM. Recall that elastic potential energy is given by half times K, the spring constant, multiplied by the displacement squared. You might have seen this formula for elastic potential energy in a, in a slightly different guise. For example, half K times E squared, where E stands for extension. Or perhaps from the materials chapter, you might recall half times maximum force times change in length. But all these things are equivalent to one another. Now, as mentioned earlier, at maximum displacement, we know that the EP will be a maximum and the kinetic energy will be zero. And so we can say that the elastic potential energy 
at maximum displacement will be half times k times a squared. This simply comes from replacing x with either a or minus a. And so if you square that, you get an a squared. And therefore, this means that the total energy of the system is simply half times k times a squared. We could now get an expression for the kinetic energy and work with that. However, it's simpler to realize that the elastic potential energy and kinetic energy receive or get a share of the total energy in a 3 to 1 ratio. This means that the elastic potential energy will be 3 quarters of the total energy. So here we've just replaced EP by half kx squared and TE, the total energy, by half ka squared. Now cancelling common factors and solving for x, we find that the displacement is equal to plus or minus root 3 over 2a or approximately plus or minus 0.87a. These are the displacements at which the EP of the mass spring system is three times as big as the kinetic energy of the system. Looking at the graphs, this result seems pretty reasonable. I'll leave it to you as an exercise to prove that the two graphs intersect at plus or minus a divided by square root of 2. And so the displacements we found are to the left and to the right respectively of those points. So they're perfectly reasonable. One further useful example is for you to try and prove that the velocity is given by plus or minus omega, the angular frequency, times square root of a squared minus x squared. This is probably a formula you're familiar with, probably seen on the formula sheet, but as I said, I think it's quite useful for you to try and prove this yourself. If you found this video useful, please like it, share it, subscribe to the Forestland channel if you haven't, and leave a comment. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you for listening, and I hope to see you soon.